Okay, so I wanted to try RPI play with my very old amp and speakers, and I wanted to use it just with audio without a screen. And in the later part of the video, I'll show you how I've set it up. It's not perfect, but it is still pretty impressive. So if I bring in my iPad, if I slide down from the top and hit screen mirroring, I get an option for RPI play. If I tap on that, that's gonna connect the audio and the picture to my Pi, but I'm not using a monitor, so we're not gonna see any picture but I wanted to use it for audio. So if I pick a track and play it, And I can use this with my iPhone, my Mac, or my iPad. It starts up on its own, so basically what I've done is when I switch it on, it automatically boots up and launches RPI Play, so you don't need a screen, you don't need to do anything to it. And when I finish with it, I just switch it off, but I'm sure there's a better way of doing that. The rest of the video is showing you the process, how I got to this stage and got it all working. If I can think of anything else, I'll put it in the description and the comments. Okay, so I meant to do this video quite a while ago now. Um, I ended up putting my Hi-Fi back in the loft, but I wanted to get an interface with an old Hi-Fi from a Raspberry Pi 4. And uh, so I thought I'd try and revisit it. So if I go to the start menu on this system and go to RPI Play, that will turn my screen gray after I press enter. And if I drag down on my iPad and tap screen mirroring, RPI Play comes up, I can tap on that, and that will then mirror my iPad or iPhone or Mac to my screen. I think this works with Android as well. I'm sure, I'm sure I've used AirPlay uh, with Android devices in the past. So this is actually pretty responsive now. It's much more responsive than it used to be. Uh, and so it's mirroring the screen of my iPad. Now if I wanted to play some music, I can. I've got a speaker plugged into this. But I'm going to do this with an older hi-fi, but this is ju I just thought I'd try it to see if it was still working. And you can hear the music playing. If I skip in a bit. I won't play too much because obviously I'll get demonetized. But uh, yeah, so AirPlay mirroring is actually working fine now. Uh, and I'm really impressed with it. So let's switch over to screen capture. So I want this to be a system that I don't have to use with a screen, I just want to use it with a hi-fi, so I want it to auto start, and I did find a GitHub, so there is a way of doing it, but I'm going to create a fresh copy of Raspberry Pi OS, so let's open up Raspberry Pi Imager, and write an image to a new SD card, so I've just plugged my SD card in, choose OS, Raspberry Pi OS, and write, and yes. So I'm going to use what I think is the best looking case for the Raspberry Pi 4. And uh, a big advantage of this case as well is that it's completely silent. Obviously I need to put thermal paste in there. Okay, so that's all in there now, all screwed together and I've got thermal paste. And I just think it's the coolest looking Raspberry Pi case. Okay, so let's switch back into screen capture. So as I'm not going to use this with the display, I'm going to drop the display down to 720. So the Pi will run cooler and will use less power. So screens, resolution, and 720, and tick. I'm going to use PyKiss to install RPI Play just because I think it's the easiest way of doing it. So I'll scroll down until we get to the installation. Control-Alt-T to open a terminal and paste it in. Okay, that's all done. Let's close that down and go to System Tools and PyKiss. And it's under Others, I think. Yeah, RPI Play. And that's it. Enter to run the app. That gives us this grey screen. So now if I pull down from the top right hand corner on my iPad, tap on screen mirroring, tap on RPI Play, it should connect. There you go, it took a few seconds but it did it. Uh, and this is the video I'm editing while I'm doing it and you can see that it's really responsive. I could use this as an extra monitor, uh, a wireless monitor with a TV or something like that and I can basically do my edit and just check through everything's uh, looking all right on the big screen. So let's quit out of that. 
When it goes back to a grey screen, you sometimes find you can't quit out of it. It's either Alt F4 or Control C. So if I give it a few seconds after I've disconnected and then do Control C, there you go, that worked fine. Okay, so that's all working, but what I wanna do is to be able to use it without a screen. So there's a few things I need to do. I need to change the audio to make it come out of the AV jack, which that should now be done, yeah. Uh, and it's at 100%, which is good. Press enter to go back to the menu. And let's quit out of PyKiss. And just to show you that it's under System Tools and RPI Play. So we wanna get that to start up. Uh, well, luckily there's a GitHub for this. And I'll put a link in the description. So let's copy this. And do Control Alt T. And paste that in. And hit Return. And then it says down here, add this to the end. So let's go all the way down. There we go. Right click and paste. Control O, enter, Control X. And it also says for automatically logging in after booting and thus automatically starting at RPI play, use the auto login option in Raspberry Config's boot setting. So sudo raspberry-config, system options, boot auto login, desktop auto login, automatically logged in as Pi user. And let's do finish and then reboot and see what happens. Okay, it looks like it's starting up normally. Comes up as 720, but doesn't look like it's launched RPI Play. Let's just double check with the mirroring options on here. Yeah, it's not showing up on here. Wonder why that hasn't worked. I reckon I might know what it is, so let's call that page up again. So it did talk about the location HomePy RPI Play, and I'm wondering if PyKiss puts it somewhere else. So let's have a look and see where it's located. So HomePy RPI Play. Ah, so it's in Apps. HomePy Apps is the location of it. So HomePy Apps RPI Play. So that's all I need to add in. So let's open a terminal. Pop that in again, all the way down, homepy forward slash apps forward slash. Just check that everything looks all right. Yeah, that looks all right. Control X I can do this time and yes, enter and reboot. Fingers crossed. Looks like it's starting up again. Still going to desktop, <laughs> oh dear. Okay, so I managed to do the next bit without plugging my mic in, so I'm gonna narrate what I've done. So I went back into sudo raspi config, and uh, I changed it so it boots into the command line, and you can see I've got this error up, bash home pi apps rpi play is a directory. So it's not actually finding the, uh, the executable or the file that it needs to launch. So I typed in start x to launch the desktop, and I went into the folders to see exactly how the folder structure was. So you can see RPI Play. So I needed to add RPI Play on the end of what I'd already added in because it was in a folder called RPI Play, not the actual app being called RPI Play. So let's open a terminal and let's add the necessary line in. So scroll down to the bottom and you can see here, so after RPI Play, because that's just telling it where the folder is, it needs to launch the app that's in there. So forward slash RPI play. And then I'll save that file again and reboot. Okay, that's what it was. So if I do a reboot now, so it's, it's in AirPlay now. Uh, so if I drag down screen mirroring, RPI play comes up. This is even better because it's not running a desktop environment. So it'll be even less resources of the Pi. All it's doing is this screen mirroring. 
So, and I've edited a bit more, because I'm editing as I go along, I just find it easier to do it that way. So, uh, let's just show you how it restarts now, stop mirroring. So, if I press uh, Control, -C, I wait a second, press Control C, there you go, takes me back. Uh, so, if I wanted to shut down now, I could look up how to shut down with terminal, but I don't need to do that at the moment. There is, I, can, I always forget what it is. Um, but if I uh, just do reboot, just to show you what happens. So this will show it as it would start up if you just turned it on from being switched off. I did have a thought as well uh, that I could use this to shut it down because all I would need to do would be uh, control C and then control alt delete and enter. Uh, and I could have this plugged in. This has got a little USB dongle in it, so I could leave that plugged into the Pi uh, if I wanted to do it. I, to be honest, I'd probably just switch it off um, because if I'm not screen mirroring to it, I can't see that it's doing very much at that time. So uh, yeah, I would probably just switch it off at the power. There you go. So that's come on with screen, play, screen mirroring uh, option or RPA player started. Let's click on that. Next thing is going to be is is this going to work exactly the same way if you haven't got a screen connected? I hope it will. So let's just go in here and let's see if the sound is working as well. So I've got my analog jack in here. I've got my speaker here. Uh, so if I start playing a video, something with a bit of music in it. Oh, what am I doing? I'm on my iPad. An EPSP HDR. Start playing that. So I've got no audio. I wonder if it's sending the audio through the HDMI. Let's just have a look. It is, and that sounded awful. Um, so now I need to uh, know how to make it start up with three and a half mil jack uh, on the terminal. I guess that's in Raspberry config. Uh, oh, there's lots of elements to this. Right, so let's switch off. Okay, let's try Raspberry Config and see if there is a setting in there. I'm sure there is for, oh yeah, audio, look. Headphones. Oh, can it be as easy as that? Finish. And then reboot. Okay, so I tried and tried to get the sound to come out of the analog jack. And whatever I try, it, it doesn't come out of that. Even if it's selected and the operating system is working, I've tried it within uh, a graphical user interface, I've tried it with command line. Uh, whatever I do, it looks like RPI Play only plays audio through an HDMI output, which isn't too much of an issue. Uh, in this case, uh, I can do it through my capture device because the HDMI is going into that and then I can take an audio output from that. But that's not a cheap way of doing it. The other way to do it is this HDMI converter, which I've had for ages now. So I bought it when the Apple TV 4 came out because Apple TV, they took off the optical connection. Basically, we've got HDMI in and then we can output analog audio and also optical audio as well. And it has an HDMI throughput. But for this purpose, I don't need that because the signal is going to go in from the Pi and then just analog audio out left and right into the old amplifier that you saw at the start of the video. Anyway, I hope you like this. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.